Hello, good evening, and welcome to Salinas Stadium. We're tonight on Kelly Lois, and we've got a fantastic Western Buckeye League opener between the rivals in the Battle of Grand Lake, the visiting St. Mary's Rough Riders and the homestanding Salina Bulldogs. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Darren Gilbert, and we've got all the action for you tonight here from Salinas Stadium. And Gilly, a couple of squads that neither one of them put a point on the board last week. Neither one of them real happy with how they played last week and going to try to right that ship tonight. Now, one of the things we talked about last week in the broadcast that I did, you know, expanding the playoffs has shortened the season as far as preparation time. So that could play into some huge effects on why, you know, both teams struggled to find the end zone. And secondly, they played against two ball clubs that executed very well and at both ends of the, the field. And, and as a result, Salina couldn't find the end zone, nor could St. Mary's. A lot of question marks coming into week two for both sides. St. Mary's has won the toss and elected to receive. They wanted the football right away. And uh, Coach Bo Fry told us, hey, we were embarrassed in week one. Just flat out didn't like their effort, Didn't wasn't happy with a whole lot when it came to the 17-0 loss to St. Mar Henry, I beg your pardon. Had just 131 total yards of offense. And when St. Mary's quarterback's going to throw the ball 19 times, that's not a recipe for success for them. No, because you know what they like to do, the dive and the veer, okay? And, and, and they do that very, very well. And, you know, they lost a lot of pieces from last year. And for him coming over here and winning the toss, nothing's better than for the visiting programs to come in or the visiting team to come in, take a shot to see if he can't get on the board on the road. So this is the St. Mary's offense. The starting lineup looks like this for a, Offensive linemen from left to right, Terry Amborski, Cameron Roth, Carson Sturwald, Will Glass, and Tanner Maley. Cody Wallace is the quarterback. He'll trigger things. A six foot three, 225 pound senior we mentioned. Threw the ball 19 times, only threw it 40 all of last season. Keaton Fishbaugh will line up at tight end. Eli McNeil will line up at the split back, the split wide receiver. And then the three running backs that will line up and the slot. And behind at Cody Wallace are Colton Mabry, Kevin Perry, and Dominic Osborne. Colton Mabry had 46 of St. Mary's 71 rushing yards a week ago. The Salina defense, Caden Merlin, Cameron Elson, and Dalton Chilcoat will be up front in the defensive line to the linebackers, Tucker Ackley, Corbin Lehman, Carter Allstetter, John Lutz, and the back four, Caden Wards, Braylon Gabus, Caleb Gabus, and Carver Harris. So Salina's got the football teed up. And Zach Gerber will send it away for the Battle of Grand Lake. And Salina looking to pick up a victory in this battle. St. Mary's has won seven straight versus the Bulldogs that Salina would certainly like to reverse tonight. Got a balmy week two kickoff. Spent most of the... <laughs> most of the Speak for <laughs> yourself. Yeah, balmy is a good word for it. <laughs> Spent most of the... Uh, Pre-kickoff festivities in the shade as far away as we could as a kickoff. Nice kick. Ends in the end zone. And so St. Mary's, the off the touchback, will start their first drive at the 20-yard line. Nice luxury to have when you got a kicker that can kick that thing into the end zone. Tonight's first quarter brought to you by Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service that you can count on. So the ball spotted at the 20-yard line to Rough Riders. Make no mistake about it, going to try to establish things on the ground early. Okay, Salina will pack the box. That wing tee backfield. The turnaround and handoff to Kevin Perry. Had six carries last week and gets the first one of the night for the Rough Riders. King of about three and a half. And about four. Now they'll move it closer to five yards. So about four and a half yards on the first carry there for Kevin Perry. Chill code on the stop there for the Bulldogs. I'll hand it off up the gut this time. Mabry the carry, but he has stood straight up in the hole. Another tackle for Dalton Chilcote, the junior. Chilcote along with Ackley, number 50. So that'll bring up third and a little longer than maybe the Rough Riders anticipated after that first carry from Kevin Perry. Salina, really good size on the front, both offensively and defensively. Noah Dixon will come into the game for the Rough Riders in exchange for a tight end. It's going to be a slightly different formation upcoming for the visitors. So they'll go straight T backfield behind Wallace. 
He'll turn around, hand it off to Perry. He goes right up the gut, and again, that's the line of defense. Stands tall to try and force that three and out. Here to be Ackley on the stop. So after a nearly five-yard gain on the first carry, Rough Riders pick up about a yard and a half after that on two more and are forced to punt, where Jacob Kessler will drop back deep to punt for the Rough Riders. Gave us back deep to return for Salida. Kobe Thompson also in on the stop there for the green and white. Kessler sends it away. It's a wobbler. It'll bounce the 48-yard line and roll to the 34, and that is where Salina will start their first drive of the night. So defensively for Salina, they wanted to stop the run and make sure they didn't have any big plays. Check mark on drive number one. Absolutely. Put them in a three and out situation. Now they get the football. The Bulldog offense triggered by Bobby Morris, a five foot 10 junior. Struggled in the opener against Versailles, six of 13 for 27 yards through three interceptions. Hoping to settle in tonight in week two. He's joined in the backfield by John Lutz. We'll go through the Salina offense a little bit more after play number one, where Lutz gets the handoff, has a little bit of room to run up the middle, out to the 40 yard line, a gain of five on the first carry. The offensive line for the Bulldogs, Cameron Elson, Caden Merlin, Isaac Yaney, Dalton Chilcote, and Jack Eichler from right to left. The wide receivers, Braylon Gabus, Xander Jones, and Carter Alstead are getting the bulk of the work on the outside. And Nick Newell will line up at tight end and will line up in the slot here at the bottom of your screen. Hayden Davis on the stop there, number 20 for the Rough Riders. Second and five for Salina. Morris turns, fires, catch is made by Gabus on the outside. Caleb gave us the catch and the first down. Yep. Oh, no, you're right. That it, Carter Allstetter is the recipient of the catch. So he'll pick up the Layfield Industrial and Wilding Supplies first down. Oh, and out on the stop for St. Mary's. What a good size freshman, 6'3", 195. Tackling him at the boundary there on the far side. If you're playing varsity football at St. Mary's as a freshman, you got a lot of potential. Yes, sir. As Lutz the carry, nearly brought down to the backfield. Has some convoy of blockers in front of him. That's a gain of about seven on the carry for John Lutz. Mabry and Dotson on the stop for St. Mary's after about seven yards. Get in to St. Mary's territory and Lutz had a pretty nice opening week to the season, all things considered. Had five carries, 57 yards, 57 of their 134 yards total. Has a bunch formation to the right side for Salina as they'll put Braylon Gavis in at quarterback. He'll take the Wildcat snap, run up the middle. It's got the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies first down and more out to the 40. Yeah, he had his mind made up, didn't he? He was going to go right behind those big offensive linemen on the left side. And they just pushed the pile. Big, big gain right there for the young man. And a first down for the Bulldogs. It's something to watch that I think the officials are probably aware of. It's a pretty heated rivalry between these two. It's a pretty heated night, so it might not take long to get a little extracurricular activities as Gavis will come back into the game at quarterback. Yeah, the head man is Matt Jennings, or excuse me, Matt Cummings tonight in the white hat. Gavis keeps it himself after the fake to Lutz. He's got more room to run out to nearly the 30-yard line. It's going to be very close to another Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies first down. I believe he has it. Steinberg with the tackle. Nice cut back there by that young man with the football. Braylon Gavis give it a little different look there for the Bulldogs. Planted that foot, didn't he? Got yes, it up field, north and south. Bobby Morris will come back in at the quarterback spot. Be joined in the backfield by Parker Burke, a six foot sophomore. It'll stand to his left on the sidecar. Couple of minutes gone by on a Wabash Mutual telephone scoreboard. Carry to Burke, he'll go right up the gut. Grabbed onto by Owen Ott and pushed backwards, but not after, not until after he picked up a couple of yards. Odd on the stop along with Kevin Perry and a host of Rough Riders. And really, a, a, even though it's been out of the spread, Salina just 
kind of trying to shove St. Mary's around where they can. Yeah, they want to use that size to their advantage up front, and right now they're being very successful at that. Berkey again in the backfield. Newell line up a tight end on the bottom of your screen. Carter Allstead of the wing on second and seven. Xander Jones gets the handoff in the backfield. Jones turns the corner. It's a race to the pylon. It doesn't win it. Doesn't matter. Salina now in the right State University Lake Campus red zone after that big carry by Xander Jones. Yeah, Xander Jones got loose along the outside after a great block by uh, appeared to be Gabus. Run him out of bounds to boundary. Perry saved the touchdown there for the Rough Riders. So the ball spotted at the four-yard line. So we approach the midway point here for this first quarter, brought to you by Pantry Pride. Gavis back in the gun as the Wildcat quarterback with Berkey to his right. Takes the snap, looks to go off right tackle. He'll waltz into the end zone. Braylon Gavis, an easy four-yard touchdown run. And with the... Heck of a kick-out block, wasn't it? Opened up that seam and he went right on the... Backside of that offensive lineman untouched to the end zone. So an easy touchdown for the Bulldogs. An efficient drive put together by the green and white. Will now bring on the field goal unit for the varsity lanes extra point. Zach Gerber, who put the opening kickoff into the end zone for a touchback. Yeah, he's definitely got plenty of leg. Let's see how he does on this conversion. Snap his back, holds down, the kick is up, and the kick swings the upright. Salina leading St. Mary's early here in the first quarter on WSN. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We're invested in the Sir, your bank. The People's Bank. Salina out to an early 7 0 lead tonight over the St. Mary's Rough Riders and Zach Graber on to kick the kickoff. Mispronounced Zach's name the first two times we said it, so that's my bad. Zach Graber on to kick for Salina. And the Rough Rider faithful trying to come alive. That kick will stay in bounds. Kevin Perry will scoop it up. Got a bevy of blockers in front of him. Has to find room to run. Tries to barrel through a Salina defender before he's shoved out of bounds. So the Rough Riders will start at their own 20-yard line once more on drive number two. Things started off well for St. Mary's on that first carry. Get a five-yard gain and then a yard and a half on the next two. I see a lot of running tonight, Gilly. Well, I think you're going to have both ball clubs is going to make the decision that they're going to they're try to force each opponent into throwing the football because they love to run the football, both teams, and we know from past history but that's what they do. They'll hand the ball off Mabry up the middle, got room to rumble, oh, breaks a tackle, back. and he'll race to the end zone. Colton Mabry is going to go. 80-yard touchdown run for the fullback, and St. Mary's answers on the first play of the drive. Yeah, they saw something. The coaches in the press box that Salina was doing defensively made that adjustment. That young man just sprinted to the end zone. Got to the secondary level, made a quick juke move, and it was all end zone the rest of the way. That's a great run from Colton Mabry. St. Mary's had 131 yards of total offense all last week, and they get 80 on that run. And the Rough Riders now trot on the extra point unit, brought to you by Varsity Lanes. As Logan Rush will do the honors. Carter Steenberg will hold. We got a whistle. Not sure the reason for the stoppage in play. We're getting a gets equipment adjustment. Get the play clock reset here. It, where was it a play clock? Okay. Yep. So now we'll, Logan Rush will attempt the varsity lane's extra point. A little high snap. Rush the kick. Gets it through the uprights, through the trees, and across the street for the extra point. Rocky by Varsity Lanes. And we're all square at seven after the one yard, one play, 80 yard touchdown drive on the Rough Riders. Here on WSN. Instant replay tonight. Rocky by Lee's Mayor's President of Chicken and Fly. Walk off Delta and St. Mary's. Always call your kid. Lee's Mayor's President of Chicken. Home style. 
happens here. Just past the halfway point of the first quarter, neither squad put a point on the board last week. We're tied at seven after a pair of touchdown runs. First for Braylon Davis for Salina, and an 80-yard rush for Colton Mabry. Has us all dotted up at seven. As Logan Rush goes to kick it away. Kicks it deep. Just at the numbers. Goes through the arms of the Salina defender, but he'll pick oh, it up before. He is back. He's punished by Hayden Davis. And the Rough Riders now find themselves in control of the momentum. Cameron Dammeyer on the stop. Big hit there for that young man on the kickoff team. So the ball is 23-yard line for the Bulldogs, who were quite efficient running the football on their first drive. That was a really good series for them. Bobby Morris will line up in the gun with Berkey to his left. And now sends a man in motion. Allstetter, they'll fake the handoff. Turn, quick connection to Xander Jones. Tries to slip the tackle, can't. And the tackle made by Luke Bournes in the open field. I'm glad you saw that. <laughs> the uh, press box here at Salani does present some unique challenges, but uh, we're we're it's getting a through. It's place to play. Seriously, it's, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're playing, this is a bet between this facility here and the gymnasium. Opponents, this this is a tough place to come in. There's play. no track on the on the field, so the stands right on top of the field. One of the few places left in the WBL still has natural grass. So all center will go in motion once more. The handoff to Birdkey. He'll rush off right side. Brought down on the open field. That's a nice play. Gets Dammeyer again. Getting up ahead of steam and grappling into the ground. So that'll bring up third and short for Salida. As the clock continues to tick on the Wabash Mutual telephone scoreboard. Mr. Dammeyer's getting some playing time. Need that big hit on the kickoff. Morris in a shotgun once more. Third and two, fakes the handoff, turns, quickly fires to Gabus in the open field. Nearly got out of that tackle, but is brought down by Jacob Kessler. Nonetheless, it's a late fell industrial welding supplies first down. Yeah, if Kessler doesn't get him by the back of the jersey and around the ankles, I, that could have been a disaster for the Rough Riders. Nice open field tackle by that young man. Nice pitch and catch. So Solana moves the chains, resets, as we approach four minutes to go here in this opening quarter. All square at seven. As Morris stands in the shotgun once more. Three receivers to his left, one to the right. On first and ten, Lutz, the carry, looks for room. Got out to the 44-yard line, a gain of five on the first carry for John Lutz. Dotson on the stop. St. Mary's being sure to rotate as many defensive linemen as they can. It's, it's warm. Salon is running the football, so trying to get as many guys in the lineup as they can here as you still get your football conditioning in. Second and six. Lutz the carry. He's got some blockers in front of him. Turns the corner. Powers through a defender, Jacob Kessler, gives it right back to him, puts him in a wall on the far sideline. Yeah, run him out at the boundary. Nice execution there by the green and white on the offensive line there, opening up uh, outside, giving him a lane to turn the corner. Does pick up a Lafell Industrial Welding Supplies first down. As the clock continues to turn here in this opening quarter. Gabus back in at quarterback. Keeps it himself, has a lead blocker. A penalty flag down, Gabus in the open field. Turns on the Jets at the 10, five touchdown. We'll see what the penalty flag is though, back near the midfield stripe. And it looks like we've got a holding call that's gonna bring it back. Yep, that's the preliminary indication we got a hold. And it goes against the Bulldogs. So instead of Braylon Gabus having his second touchdown run, it'll be first and long. It was a very good run. Got in the open oh. field, turned the Jets on. Unfortunately, it's coming back. Yeah, that kid has got a lot of athleticism, doesn't he? 
he got through that first tier. Just got to a little cross, crossover move, and man, he was gone. Bobby Morris, the Solana quarterback, completed six passes last week. Five of them went to Gabus. Instead of a touchdown, it's going to be first and 20. The ball spotted at the 42-yard line. Unfortunate penalty goes against the Bulldogs and wipes a touchdown off the board. Yeah, Gabus, when he, when he did that left to right there with that plant, there was St. Mary's defenders trying to have the angle on him. He, he just flat out outran him. Tough break. Morris in a gun. With Bergke to his left. And he'll get the handoff. Has to avoid his own offensive lineman. And he stood straight up for a loss of about half a yard. Appears to be the freshman, isn't it? Owen Ott. So that's a nice play by Ott. That'll bring up second and 21. 2.30 to go here in the first quarter on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. All square at seven. Bulldogs looking to get some chunk yardage here on second and long. Morris drops back, looks to his right, fires, caught by Gabus, slips a tackle, nearly slipped another one, brought down by Dan Meyer. That's a very big play on second and long. Sure was. For the Bulldogs. That was a great job route running and a great job by the quarterback getting his feet set. Spinning it to his receiver. That's a gain of 17 on second and 21. Dan Meyer and Kessler on the stop for the Rough Riders. Berkey joins Morris in the backfield. Allstetter goes in motion. And they got oh, St. Mary's to jump. Person. They got him. And that will pick up a Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies first down. And that's the things that St. Mary's wanted to avoid. And they said, you know, we, we got to play better, smarter, situational football. Third and four, you can't jump off sides. And you give Salina a first down now after being backed up. The ball at the 37-yard line is Salina. Approaching the right State University Lake Campus red zone. We approach one minute to go here in this opening quarter. Newell, the tight end. Allstetter, the wing. Morris, the QB. He'll look to throw. Fires, and it's caught by Caden Wernst. Nice timing there. Nice execution, Kessler. And really, Salina in the passing game, at least, is just taking what St. Mary's gives them. If you're going to play that far off, yes. we're just going to run five-yard hitches and yep. throw high-percentage passes. Yep. Yeah, Kessler did all he could do to defend it and just pushed him out at the boundary. But great execution there by the Bulldogs. Clock continuing to tick as Braylon Gabus will call the signals this time. Three wide receivers to his left. He'll hand off to Burkey. Burkey tries to go through a Rough Rider defender, shoved out of bounds, but he picks up six yards in the process. Parker Burkey. A nice carry. Sure was. Appeared to be Davis and Kessler. That might do it for the first The second quarter about to get underway. Tonight's second quarter brought to you by Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride, best quality, best value, best service. Salina scored first. St. Mary's answered with a one-play touchdown drive of their own. Bulldogs driving now. They are inside the Wright State University Lake Campus red zone. As Braylon Gabus, the senior wide receiver, lined up at quarterback with Lutz to his left. Gabus needs a block, gets one, reverses field down very close to the 10-yard line and picks up 
the late Felt Industrial and Welding Supplies first down. Good job with his patience right there, waiting for his offensive lineman to get downfield, getting as much as he could. Brought down by a host of Rough Riders. So first and 10. So the ball's at the maybe 11 and a half yard line, so still not first and goal. First and 10, they can pick up a first down. As Gavis will line up in the gun once more. Parker Bertke riding in the sidecar. Gavis will give it to him. Hole in the middle. Got inside the 10-yard line. Appeared to be Caleb Turner there. Got him around the ankles. Gain of about five. Up in a spot a little farther back than I originally thought. So it's the nine-yard line. Still second and eight for the Bulldogs. Is well, the nice thing is, too, partner, they can get a first down out of this. Yeah, you get you still got seven seven cracks at it from the seven yard line. Yeah, you gotta, absolutely. Got to like your chances if you're wearing green and white. And we got a packed house here tonight. I know it's a heated rival, not very far for St. Mary's to come, but there are cars parked everywhere yeah. around here. Absolutely. Gave us in a gun. Berkey to his left. We're gonna stop. <laughs> Step aside as well early in quarter number two. Just square at seven. Raylan Gavis caught five passes, has a touchdown run to his credit already tonight. Takes the snap, goes off left tackle, but he's gobbled up. A big play there. Sure was, wasn't it? Logan Compton the tackle. I thought it was 91. I looked at the roster, I was like, I can't see a 91. Nope, it's 31 on the stop. That's a big play by Logan Compton. Yeah, he closed that hole up quick, didn't he? Got him by the ankles. So third and somewhat long here inside the Wright State University Lake Campus Red Zone. As the clock continues to tick as we approach two minutes gone here in the second quarter. Bobby Morris in the gun, a bunch formation to his right, as is Parker Burtke. Xander Jones by his lonesome to his left. Morris will roll, fires, caught by Allstetter. And they'll say it's caught inside the five yard line, but it's gonna be short of the first down marker. Salina again, just high percentage completions. Hit him in the flats, so spotted the tail end of the football at the five yard line. Here's they're gonna go for it. Fourth and two. John Lutz will come in the ball game in exchange for Parker Burke. We'll see what the Bulldogs dial up here on fourth and short. Gavis, who's lined up at quarterback, has ran the ball every time he's caught it from the center. As Isaac Yanny will stand over the football, ready to snap it back on fourth and two, and yep. the Bulldogs will take there's, another timeout. Time. Yep, you saw it too. He went right, right <laughs> you can see there. Brennan Bader, the Solana oh, head coach, yeah. his <laughs> taking off, and it doesn't take much to get your exercise tonight, Gilly. You get, uh, <laughs> it's a little warm. Yeah. Uh, people just sitting up here in the press box just talking about football or sweating. Uh, and, and kudos to the officials, done a nice job of making sure players get breaks to get water as often as they can. It's a I'm envious of Sal Salina's <laughs> coach because he, he got down there real quick. So fourth and four, fourth and, and it is fourth and four from the five. Bulldogs can get a first down without picking up a touchdown. And I just wonder, Gilly, how much or what the, the throwing prowess of Braylon Gabus looks like every time he's caught the snap. He's kept it, he's, they've ran it, I guess I should say. He's handed it off to John Lutz and Parker Burke a couple of times. But I just wonder if you get in this situation, if maybe he might put it in the air on the old Tim Tebow pop pass or well, you see you know, St. Mary's thinks one thing and see if you can so zig they, where they well, zag. They've been very, very, very successful tonight with the short routes. It hasn't been the deep ball, it's been the short yeah. routes. So Lutz lines up to the right. Allstetter, the wing, as Gabus awaits the snap. Takes it, does put it in the air. It's an easy pitch and catch to Nick Newell. And a after. I'm not going to give you credit. Come on, that. Gilly, give me some credit I'm there. Give you maybe later on on that 
He's, he's ran it every time. Oh, he's going to throw it. That was a great call. It really was because you know you're forced to sell out on the on the run because he's been so dynamic with the football. we got to make sure we stop him. The touchdown catch for Nick Newell, his first of the year, brings on the extra point unit. And the varsity lane's extra point awaits for Zach Graber. Great execution there by the Bulldogs. He's up and good. Salina has a 14-7 lead over their heated rivals here on WSN. Down sponsor is Lake Bell Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Port Water. Salina cheering up the Lake Bell Industrial Welding Supplies first downs. Get the touchdown on the last drive. So, Bulldogs, even, and really, Gilly, I think the drive is put together with you get second and 21, and Salina still converts and is able to put some more points on the board. Well, and the coach gives a little confidence to the quarterback letting him throw the football. Kevin Perry yeah, catches he, the ball in the end zone, and that's an automatic touchback. Yep. Much as he probably didn't want it to be, he'd like to have a football in his hands and get a chance to do something with it. Instead, the ball spotted at the 20-yard line. I guess one word for Salina right now in this first half, they've been very efficient. Absolutely. Yeah, playing solid and fundamentally sound football on both sides of the ball and you know St. Mary's is, is being efficient also. Yeah you get one play one touchdown. No, absolutely. <laughs> and, and really not a lot of guys going both ways for the Rough Riders so they, they haven't taken the field very much here in the early going as Perry the handoff able to get through a tackler brought down by Caleb Gabus. Good call there. Number seven, really on the carry. And <laughs> really St. Mary's been <laughs> rested up. I, I don't know what in real time, how long it's been since they've played because Colton Mabry got the long touchdown. So outside of the first couple of minutes here, a quarter number one, this is the first time St. Mary's is coming back on the field for the, with the football. Sure. Ackley on the stop this last possession. Cody Wallace will turn around and hand it off. This one to Dominic Osborne, his first carry. He's got some room, but a penalty flag comes down. Brought down in the open field by Braylon Gabus. A nice run by Osborne, but it's coming back. Yeah, I think one of the guys on the outside got held. There was a big hole for Dominic Osborne to run through. And St. Mary's, when the official comes over and explains things to the head coach, the head coach just nods his head and smiles. You know, it was probably a pretty egregious hold. Yeah, he probably got a bird's eye view of it <laughs> when, too, when, from that sideline because he, he did not say Yep, he didn't say a word. Yep, he just down. nodded and said, yep. Mm -hmm. And it'll be second along for the Rough Riders. Yep, Mr. Cummings is the one that threw the flag, and he's the one that explained it to the head coach. Eight eighteen remaining on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard here in the second quarter. Bulldogs 14, Rough Riders 7. The ball spotted at the 13-yard line. So it'll be second and 17 for St. Mary's. Split backfield behind Wallace. Still look to gain some yards. Hand off to Mabry right up the gut. Similar play to the touchdown run where they sent a man in motion and run it straight up the middle. Gain of a couple, but it's going to bring up Still third and difficult for the Rough Riders. Big, big stop, excuse me, by Ackley. On with Thompson. It's the ball at the 16-yard line. It'll be third and 15. See what or how St. Mary's plays this here in the shadow of their own goalpost. Fake the handoff. Wallace will look to throw. Fires. It's caught by Steinberg, but shy of the first down sticks. Ackley was right on his back as soon as he caught and brought him to the ground. And the Rough Riders will send out the punt unit. And Braylon Gabus will go back deep to return for the Bulldogs. Has a rushing and passing touchdown tonight for the green and white. Jacob Kessler, the punter, will send away his... Second punt here momentarily. Mabry the up back. 
Kessler report. Low snap, Kessler handles it. It's a high, short kick. Davis looks to fair catch at the 46-yard line. So Salina will have very good starting field position after standing up defensively. So the Bulldogs been efficient offensively so far tonight. And really, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, Gilly. Well, you know, go with what you, know, you do best, and that's putting the football on the ground and then mixing up a little bit of pitch and catch action. Work. This is a big possession for both ball clubs. If yeah. Salina can punch it in or if St. Mary's can defend the football and get them in a, a, a three and out. Morris brings all center in motion, hands off to Lutz. Breaks to the outside, breaks through one tackle, has the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies first down and more still on his feet. Finally goes out inside the 40-yard line. That's a nice run by John Lutz. Dotson and Kessler on the boundary over there, pushing him out of bounds, but not till. He got enough for a first down for the Bulldogs. Moves the chains, and Solana, we've said before, the word efficient comes to mind over and over again, and one play, one first down. I'm sure Brennan Brader will take it. Head of steam right there and dropped that shoulder. Morris will throw. Caught on the outside. Room to run for Xander Jones. Very close again to another Layfeld Industrial Water Supplies first down. Davis on the tackle. Not after what, gaining about nine yards. Good job there by the receivers opening up and sustaining their block on their men. Their defenders. Six minutes to go in the first half on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Yes, Morris. Send all center to his right as a wing. Has two more wide receivers to his right on second and one. Lots of the handoff. Has the first down. Met in the open field by the rough rider defender, Kevin Perry. Nice tackle there by Perry. It's another Langfeld Industrial Molding Supplies first down. Caleb Gavis will come out of the game in exchange for Caden Wernst. Wide receiver for wide receiver split. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. St. Mary's sends a linebacker on a blitz. Morris just runs straight ahead, a gain of about four on first down. Hayden Davis on the stop yep. for St. Mary's. Sure was, along with uh, Noah Dixon. And to Salina's credit, for as efficient as they've been, they've eaten a lot of clock here in this oh, first half as well. Sure have. Berkey to the right of Morris on second and seven. Might have got a false start and did. Dalton Chilcoat from his right guard spot, wanted to get started just a hair too early. And that'll push Solana behind the sticks again. Been a relatively well played first half. Penalty wise. Yeah, all these things are very correctable and can get cleaned up. So second and 12 upcoming for Salina. Braylon Gavis will line up at the wing. One of the first times we've seen him in that position is Morris. Drops back to pass, pressured. Will roll to the right, and it's caught by Gavis, but he's met in the open field. That's a nice stick by Noah Dixon to stop Gavis in the open field. It's just a gain of about a half yard. Mr. Dixon coming up, putting the lick into him, huh? So a big third down for both sides here. St. Mary's wants to get off the field and get the football back with as much time remaining. Solana wants a late on industrial welding supplies first down. Gotta love the cowbells, huh? Morris, the 5'10", 155 pound junior. Steps back inside the gun. There's feet at the 39 yard line. Bulldogs, third and 12. Hands off to Lutz. Tries to get to the outside. Spun down at the 25-yard line, or right at the 20-yard line, I beg your pardon. So the Bulldogs 
get in to the Wright State University Lake Campus red zone, rank it fourth and short. Nice tackle there by Kevin Perry. So fourth and short. The last time we got the pop pass. See what Salina does is Braylon Gavis looks like he's going to come back in at quarterback. Go ahead. What are we going to do? <laughs> well, you want that? Uh, I you think you want that kid the football in his hands as often as possible? Nope. Bobby Morris is going to line up at quarterback. Oh, they tricked you, huh? They did. St. Mary's wants a timeout. They might have been tricked as well. We'll step aside as well. Two fifty. Fourth and short for the Bulldogs. Bobby Morris in the gun with Parker Berkey to his left. Bulldogs have been efficient running the football here in the early going, leading 14-7. Morris fakes the handoff, turns, fires, oh, but it's knocked ball. down. Nearly intercepted, doesn't matter. Swatted down. Did Owen Ott get his mitts on it? He might have. That's a big play from that St. Mary's defense at a much needed time. That young man is playing a heck of a first half for a freshman. If that was him, it did indeed get his hands, big paws on there to deflect that football. Just climbed the ladder, knocked it up in the air, nearly intercepted, wouldn't have mattered. That's a big play for the St. Mary's D. And now, with 2.50 to go in the first half, Salina will get the football to start the second half, so Rough Riders might be in a hurry here. Backed up, hand off. Dominic Osborne stuck in the open field. John Lutz, the tackle for Salina. Boy, what a great job by shedding the block there. Stepping up, getting his shoulder squared, bringing him to the ground. Osborne, I believe his second carry of the evening. Gained it just one. Cody Wallace gets the instructions from his Rough Rider head coach. Relays him to his friends in white. Split backfield behind him. He'll turn. Pitch to Mabry. Mabry tries to meander through the Solana defense. Can't. They'll stand him up as a host of green shirts bring him to the turf. Mabry, of course, with the 80-yard touchdown run of the first quarter. Under two minutes to go now on the Wabash telephone scoreboard. Yeah, this is where you got to be careful if you're St. Mary's because if you turn it over on three and out and have to punt the football. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is give Salina the football back with, yeah, the, with them getting the ball in the start to second half. So Wallace, and now we'll get a stoppage in play. Yeah, got some equipment. Yeah, we've got a Salina Bulldog with Helping a teammate yeah, out. tennis shoe near, I guess, uh, cleat needed. Tucker Ackley needed his cleats lace back up, so the play clock gets reset. Should be with 25 instead of 40. There we go. And now, just over 90 seconds to go. Third and somewhat manageable for the Rough Riders at about five yards. Wallace breaks the huddle. Split team backfield behind him. Two tight ends to each side of the formation. Mabry the carry, breaks one tackle as he's upended by Caleb Gavis, but it's a Layfeld Industrial Wallet Supplies first down and a timeout by the Rough Riders. Nice play there by Gavis. Chopping him down below the knees at the ankles. 110 to go. Well, nice strong run right there. It, it was, and, and he's very patient with the football. It doesn't. You know, and it's kind of human nature of, I've got the football, i got to move as fast as I can, and learning to stay away from that is something that he's really perfected. Mm -hmm. And We saw it on the 80-yard touchdown where if he had just ran straight ahead, he would have went right into the arms of a Salina defender instead, took the old stutter step, cut it up for an 80-yard touchdown run, and 
St. Mary's probably going to need something similar to happen with 1.10 to go here in this first half. Ball at their own 32-yard line. Still got a long way to go. Yeah, there's a lot of football left for both ball clubs. St. Mary's with both sides with one timeout remaining in this first half. Yeah, Mother Nature partners starting to cooperate now. It's cooling <laughs> We're cooling off. down. Well, not only for us, but just everybody here, especially the players and the officials on the field. Well, you know, for instance, Salina, those jerseys weren't that shade of green when we started, but well, you, 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 get some, you get some perspiration in them because it's – it is warm, it is humid. Rough Riders, first and 10 after the late felt industrial money supplies first down. Osborne to carry, and he's met, still on his feet, still in bounds, and he's finally slung down by Cameron Elson, but that's a big play there by Dominic Osborne. And it's actually a late felt industrial money supplies first down. A big run there by that young man, a junior, 5'9", 190. Did a nice job tightrope walking this near sideline. Cap it in bounds. Now they break the huddle with under a minute to go, or just over a minute to go here in the first half. Osborne set in motion. Perry comes back the other way with the counter, but Salina read it perfectly. John sure Lutz did. was there, as was Tucker Ackley. Yeah, that's a scouting report adjustment right there that they, you know, they had that one that they had worked Scouting. on this week, that Absolutely. if this happens to you, you got to sit down, and they did just that. Perry, the ball's loose. He'll just pop on it at the 35-yard line, and with the clock ticking and the ball on the ground, and third down upcoming, might just see the Rough Riders watch the numbers tick off the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Yeah, that's unfortunate that the ball went on the ground, but that was a really nice play by that young man to make sure that he secured it. Yeah, just live to fight another day, just fall on it instead of trying to do anything else. Sure, stranger, things have happened. You try to pick it up and it slips out of your hands again. Just a good fundamental play there. St. Mary's breaking the huddle with three, two. They will snap it. Hand off to Perry, loses his footing, and that'll do it for the second quarter of play. So we'll head to the halftime break. Salina, a 14-7 advantage on a Braylon Davis touchdown run and a Braylon Davis touchdown pass. They lead their rivals, the St. Mary's Rough Riders. Third quarter action coming up on coming to OSN. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. Salina with a 14-7 advantage over the St. Mary's Rough Riders. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined by Darren Gilbert, bringing you all the action tonight here from Salina Stadium. And Gilly, we mentioned it in the first half that Salina efficient offensively. One of their keys that uh, head coach Brennan Bader told us they struggled with in week one, but they wanted to do better in week two was sustain drives, and they absolutely did that in, in the first half. They did that almost to perfection. And, uh, you know, I was, I was going to mention, you know, it's a halftime of adjustments. And Absolutely. This time when they went into the locker room, both teams are going to get together, and it's going to be a game of adjustments. I don't think we've had any turnovers in the football game. No, sir. It's been very clean played. It's been very well officiated. And, you know, Salina lost a big run on a penalty. Well, St. Mary's did too, right down here in front yep. of us. So, but, uh, you know, both teams from where they were last year to now, they've got to be pleased as a coaching staff, uh, both ball clubs. And uh, let's see what happens here in the second half. This third quarter brought to you by Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. So Salina will receive the opening kickoff of the second half and will flip field. They thought that uh, <laughs> they were going to the south side of the stadium. Nope, they are going to the north, and St. Mary's will try out Logan Rush to kick things away. And we've seen... Is that a breeze we're feeling up here? I sure hope so. Oh the flags aren't really gracious. moving, but it is a... It's turned into a nice evening. It's not too bad, a little humid. We're not doing too bad compared to where we were, uh, where some schools to the south of us here in Salina were forced to push start times back to 8 o'clock just to make sure that they didn't run into any heat-related issues as the Rough Riders get lined up. I'm just 
just curious to see if he's going to pound this into the ground or get some air underneath it. And he will kick it deep. Caught by Xander Jones at the 15-yard line. Nice little cut. Gets a cut. Xander Jones with some room to run. Off to the races is the 5'11 senior. Still on his way, and he will take it to the house in 85 yards. Oh, we got a penalty flag well, back we here. A, we got a flag back here at the 42. Penalty was, flag. There was a couple of them that was mixing it up while the football was already by them and in the clear. We got a holding call. That's what it is. Against the Bulldogs. The second time tonight, a flag has negated a touchdown for Salina. Yeah, it was right down in front of us. And the unfortunate thing is the football had already went by and was in, you know, into the open area to the clear, heading to the end zone. And a couple players were grappling with one another. So the flag comes down at the 42-yard line, and it wipes a touchdown off the board. That was a big play. Xander Jones made a couple of nice cuts to get to the end zone, but it's coming back, and the Bulldogs will have to work for it a little bit. So the ball spotted at the 32-yard line. And that's where Solana will get the first drive of the second half. Braylon gave us a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown to Nick Newell. The scoring for the Bulldogs in the first half. It's Bobby Morris, the 5'10 junior. Stands in the gun. Sends a man in motion. Caleb Gabus gets the handoff. He'll try to turn the corner. Gets out to the very close to a late fell industrial welding supplies first down, and they will move the chains. Kessler pushed him out at the boundaries, but not until the first down for the Bulldogs. Now looks like Braylon Gavis will bark out the orders at quarterback for Salina. We join in the backfield by John Lutz. Send a trio of receivers to his left on first and ten. St. Mary's brings a backer off the edge. Gavis kept it himself up the middle. More room to run. Powers through a rough rider. Might have been held up by his tight end. Doesn't matter. It's a big game for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Carter Steinberg saved a touchdown right there. That's a big scamper by Braylon Gavis. The rough rider defense bit on the hand of fake to John Lutz. Gavis kept it himself. Read that defensive end. It's a big game into St. Mary's territory. Morris back in the gun. He'll hand off to Lutz, looking for room, tripped up. Caleb Turner. Was, yeah, Caleb Turner, nice call, partner. Got, got him a, by the yeah, just by the shoestring, didn't get much of him, but got enough of him to drop him down. Still a gain of about three yards for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that offensive line, Elson, Merlin, Yaney, Chilcoat, Eckler, big holes up front. Newell at tight end. Gavis back at quarterback. Will keep it himself. Runs right into the heart of that St. Mary's defense, and they'll gobble him up. Kevin Perry in on the stop, as was Hayden Davis. So third and about six. For Solano. On the stop there with a host, like you said, of other rough riders. Just not a lot of room in the middle of that St. Mary's defense on that play. No, they did a really good job stringing it out, didn't they, and then closing the holes. Looking for a Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies first down with 10 minutes to go in the quarter. Morris with a trio of wide receivers to his left. Lutz to his right. Fakes the handoff. Slings out. It's caught by Gabus with plenty of room to run. He's got the first down. Shoved out of bounds, but Salina moves the chains again. Dixon on the stop. Talked about those sustained drives, and it's something Salina has just excelled at so far tonight. Well, he doesn't spring it unless he gets protection from his offensive line and wide receivers, and they ran that to perfection. Yes, sir. Clock continuing to tick on the Wabash Mutual telephone scoreboard. Bertke. Joins Morris in the gun. Allstetter line up as the wing. 
Berkey, the carry. Stood up after a gain of five. And the Bulldogs well inside the Wright State University Lake Campus red zone. Mr. Merlin, 55 with a great kick out block right there. Opening that hole for the ball carrier to run right behind him, his backside. So the ball to 10 yard line. Second and five for the green and white. Salina a little discombobulated here. Now they'll get set up with five on the play clock. Morris, the snap, Lutz, or I beg your pardon, Bart Berkey, the carry, and he's dropped for a loss by Hayden Davis. Yeah, Davis found a crack in the seam and got through there in the backfield. Nice open field tackle by that five foot nine inch junior. I was gonna say, not a, not a big guy by any stretch of the imagination, but plays a little bigger than that, plays with a lot of heart. Oh yeah, quick and wants to either get inside the tackles and blitz or blitz on the outside. They're letting him roam a little bit, so to speak. Third and six, clock continuing to tick. Gabus in the gun, Berkey to his left. Gives to Berkey, has to try to get past a couple of Rough Rider defenders, can't do it. Dropped for a loss. And Berkey might be the, the freshman. Field goal unit might be coming on. Zach Graber comes on. Has a powerful leg. Otten Davis with the stop right there. Nice play defensively for the Rough Riders. Now let's see what kind of leg he has here, huh? Not a 29 yard field goal. The snap back to hold us down. The kick is up. It's good. About 29 yards out. Solana extends the lead to 17 7. Upholstery cleaning. Find Elite Drains on Facebook. 17-7 the score. Zach Graber ready to kick off after making the 29-yard field goal. Kicks it a high end over end kick. It'll bounce into the end zone for another touchback. And Gilly, when you can make your, oppo your opponent go 80 yards every time they get the football, that's a tough thing to do in high school football. I can recall a young man from Columbus Grove with a great leg that's yes, playing sir. football at Marshall right now that, you know, pinned a lot of opposing offenses back with his ability both as a place kicker and a kickoff kicker. It's a great luxury to have, like you said. Cody Wallace will go under center. St. Mary's has won seven straight against the Bulldogs. Needs a big couple of big plays here as Colton Mabry the carry. The ball is oh, loose. Let's see if they called him down. Well, they will. This official on the near sideline says that Colton Mabry was down. Mabry had 46 of their 71 rushing yards a week ago. Has 80 of them at least tonight on the 80 yard touchdown to Rumble. Got five more there to make it second and five for St. Mary's. It's two big boys running into one another. They'll turn around, hand it off to Mabry, off tackle on the left side. And he's gobbled up. Is that actually again? And it certainly was. A 5 8 senior makes the tackle. Just a good form tackle. Gave us also in on the stop. Third and short. It's a big third and short here for St. Mary's. Rough Riders need a Linkfeld Industrial and Wadding Supplies first down. 6.20 remaining on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Straight T backfield behind Wallace on third and short. He'll hand off to Osborne, powers his way for a Layfeld Industrial and Water Supplies first down. Much needed for the Rough Riders. Real good toughness there, wasn't it? Just drove the pile enough to get that first down. Jacob Kessler checks in the game for the Rough Riders. And at one of the running back spots behind Wallace. He'll get the carry, has a seam. Oh, a Kessler, cut. off to the races, 
hawked down by John Lutz, but that's a nice carry by Kessler. Getting very close to the Wright State University Lake Campus red zone. Well, you want to talk about an athletic play. Mr. Lutz come from the other side of the field and ran him down and ran him down quickly. Even with a stiff arm, nice run there by St. Mary's. The Rough Riders, straight T backfield behind Wallace once more. Perry, the carry right up the gut before he swallowed whole. Take a look and see who that was. Maybe it's 60. Landon. Ian Mullins, maybe? It's 67 or 57. Or okay, yeah, it is 67. You're right. Ian Mullins. Good call. Got a stoppage in play, real quick, for Bulldog to lace up the cleats again. Big Layfell Industrial Lawning Supplies first down there for the Rough Riders with 5.26 to go here in this third quarter, trailing by 10. Blue and gold looking to get some points on the board. Wallace, the instructions to his Rough Rider teammates. Carson Sturwald will stand over the football, ready to deliver it back to Wallace. He'll send a man in motion, and we get a penalty flag and a false start on St. Mary's. Yeah, appears to be the wide receiver on this Ball near side, jumped early. So that'll push things back just a hair. It's the line of defense looking for a stop. Second and 11. Yeah, these penalties are the ones that will pull the hair out of the yeah. head coach's head and the offensive coordinator. Let's see if they can readjust here, refocus. Maybe the carry, but he's hit immediately by Chilcote. Dropped to the field. Gain of about a yard and a half, if that. Nice play there by Chilcote. Third and long for St. Mary's. Probably four down territory. Wallace throwing the ball just a couple of times tonight compared to the 19 he threw in the loss to St. Henry last week. Split T backfield, third and nine. Hand off to Perry, looking for room to run. Oh, Nowhere nice to run play. as Lutz just picks him up. He's had a heck of a ball game tonight on both sides of the football. So fourth and still about seven, maybe eight for St. Mary's. Mullins also in on the stop. We got a Bulldog down. Establishing play, let's have a sign as well. 416 to go in the third, 14 fourth down coming. Seven for St. Mary's as they trail by 10. 4 15 to go in their third. An imperative play for both sides. Cody Wallace under center. Takes the handoff. Looking to throw over the middle. Left it short. And it's a turnover on downs by the Rough Riders. Yeah, had the heat coming down on him there by Caden Merlin. Had no choice but to get rid of it. And threw it just a little bit too soon. Didn't get enough on it. So St. Mary's will turn it over in Salina territory. And the Bulldogs will get the football to 25. And that's one of those, if you punt it, you know, do you get Yeah, it? you're in no man's land, you, I really. Mean, do you punt it too far, you know, and punt it through the end zone? Or Yep, that's okay, you know. Let's go back and play defense, and let's get a three and out here and get the football back. That's the mentality St. Mary's has to have here. Looks like Braylon Gabus will line up at quarterback once more. Parker Burke will stand to his right. Tight end, wing to his left. Here on first and 10. Counter, runs to the right, breaks a tackle. Gabus in the open field, sprints past one defender, is brought down at the 46 yard line. That's another big carry by Braylon Gabus. Dixon on the stop. Got some more cramping. Gabus on the ground over there appears to be cramping up. So get a couple of, get some water in the guys. As it is a little warm, a little sticky tonight. 
about 20 degrees warmer than it was in week one, which isn't what you're expecting <laughs> in Ohio high school football. You're looking for a hot week one, it's still hot a week two. Lot better than last night or yesterday. Oh my goodness. We had two crampers. We had alignment back at the 25 also. Good to see both of them bouncing up. Dalton Chilcote, the six foot two, 240 pound junior. Yeah, playing with a big old cast on that left hand. Had a nice, I had a nice night so far on yes. both sides of the football. So ball at the 49 yard line for the Bulldogs. Just under four minutes to go here in the third quarter, leading 17-7. And we've said it a couple of times, but it, it's this is a big drive for both sides. If Salina can put, put another one on the board, it puts St. Mary's in a tough spot where they gotta do some things with the football they might not want to do. And if St. Mary's can get a stop and a score, they're right back in this ball game. As Morris, in the gun, hands off to Burtke. Has a lead blocker in front of him, but an open field tackle brought down by Caleb Burke Turner. Nice play there by Turner. Solid Got him in the three. open field. Second and, Second and eight. Upcoming. Replays tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. I'm not so sure I want to be that DB to see number 55 pulling right there. No, I mean, he's, a, he's just an absolute load when he gets his feet a moving. Caleb Davis in motion. They'll hand off to Lutz. Lutz off the right side. Still on his feet. Nope, they'll say he stepped out of bounds back around the 20-yard line, but he'll be right at the Wright State University Lake Campus red zone. That's a nice run by John Lutz. How athletic is that young man? We talked Their about skill positions are really, really good. We talked about Dalton Chilcote having a nice night on both sides of the ball. You said it earlier, and you're correct. John Lutz has brought it on both sides. I mean, Carried the ball well, played linebacker really well. They are quick. First and ten, Bulldogs looking for their first win over St. For over St. Mary since 2015. 3.05 remain in the third quarter on the Walmash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Bobby Morris, the 5'10 junior, awaits the snap. Allsteader will come in. Hand off. Lutz again. The carry spun Side down to the turf the inside the, the Wright State University Lake Campus red zone. Steinberg, on the Steinberg with along with Dixon. That clock just continues to tick. It's almost as if Salinas, at some point, beating St. Mary's at their own game, running the football, watching the clock tick, being efficient. Looks like we'll get a timeout as a Rough Rider cramping up now. You get those second half cramps where you get the 23 minute st stoppage. I guess 20 minute stoppage and then a three minute warm up. But today. Man in motion. Berkey, the carry. Turner swallows him up, but it's enough for a Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies first down. He got him and held him up enough Stop for his teammates to come in there. Davis the well, you know what? It's just shy of that first down. It's going to be third to about six inches. Needed to get to the 10-yard line, and he's just shy of it, so it's going to bring up third down. Get another chill coat, gonna try out of the game again. Tonight's 50 50, $846. Check your ticket stub, 7 6. It's almost, you know, coaches tell you, you gotta, seven, gotta hydrate before we play on Friday, Friday. gotta hydrate Friday. before you play on Friday, and then you might find oh, out. You might, you they're, might. Wor they're working with his cast. Uh, well, and the officials could say, you know, if you got that wrapped up and there's any exposure where it's hard or anything like that. Got to get it taken care of. Is Gabus back in the gun with under two minutes to go in the third? Looking for room. Got stood up. Might have fallen forward for the first down and did. But you're right, Gilly. They're working on that cast on Dalton Chilcote's left hand. A lot of 
Looks like Caleb Gabus check in again. So first and goal for the Bulldogs, 90 seconds to go in the third. Looking to extend the 17-7 advantage. Gabus in the gun. Keeps it himself. Got very close to the end zone. He's brought down just shy of the stripe and will be second and goal from the one. Clock continuing to tick. One minute to go on the Wabash Mutual telephone scoreboard. So ball spotted at the two, they'll say. It's about as far in the stadium as it can be from us. Yes. Davis back in the gun. Parker Burke to his right. Plenty of room for Davis on the right side, and he's in for his second score of the evening. Just a simple quarterback power from the right side. Had a hole, walked right through it, and the lead grows for Salina. Yeah, and it all starts with the five up front plus the tight end. Opening them big holes for those athletes to get through. Solano on for the extra point. Brought to you by Varsity Lanes. Varsity Lanes Bowling Center in St. Mary's. Brings family and friends together with bowling, fun, and great food for everyone. Zach Graber on for the kick. Got it up. Got to three up right to good. Salina is over St. Mary's. Salina looking to grab their first win over St. Mary since 2015. In control right now with a 17-point advantage. And Zach Graber ready to kick it away. Put it in the end zone twice so far tonight. That one going to be just shy and caught by St. Mary's. They'll push just straight ahead. Kevin Perry out to the about the 24. Roby on the return. Stopped by Caden Wurtz. Bodies everywhere, huh? There, <laughs> there's a, just a mass of humanity at the 24-yard line. So St. Mary's will go back to work. Tried to, got down inside the Wright State University Lake Campus Red Zone on the last possession, but turned the ball over on fourth and seven. Cody Wallace will break the huddle with a straight tee backfield behind him. Got Salina to jump. Got an easy five yards. Yep, appeared to be the nose tackle. Got a little antsy. St. Mary's won this matchup 28-21 a season ago. Five yards. Both squads held scoreless in week number one, a 17-0 loss for St. Mary's to St. Henry. 26-0 loss to Versailles for Salina. Now first and five for the Riders. Mabry, the carry, met immediately. Stood straight up Mabry, by Parker Burtke. Burtke on the stop along with number 50. That looks like that might be the final play here this first quarter, unless St. Mary's works very quickly, and they might. They are just going to get it off. about to begin. Fourth quarter brought to you by Patriot Pride. First and ten for the Riders. They'll hand off to Jacob Kessler off right side. He's upended. 
open field tackle by Braylon Gabus. If he doesn't make that tackle, Kessler might still be running. Kessler, the ball carrier. He definitely got him by the ankles, didn't he? Got him. Held him right in the air. Davis Up and over. He's over playing second and seven. Fourth quarter. Just getting going in St. Mary's, trailing by 17. Wallace hands off to Mabry. Maybe a little bit of room to run, brought down by Gavis again, but a late felt industrial loading supplies first down for St. Mary's. Number four, Gavis. He's going to play the first down for St. Mary's Rutgers. Getting close to the midfield strike. Riders working with a bit of a sense of urgency. Trailing here in the fourth quarter. This is one possession they need points. Osborne to carry with some blockers, has a hole. Makes one man Great. miss, and Osborne is off to the races. Can Lutz get him? He can. My golly, he did. It's the second time John Lutz has hawked down a St. Mary's oh, Rough Rider, the but they're one deep one. in the Wright State University Lake Campus red zone. Mr. Osborne, Ball nice little the move the there. Slithered his way through there, got in the secondary, and if it wasn't for Mr. Lutz, he's got him a touchdown. Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies first down, makes it first and goal from the six. Riders need a score. Wallace, hand off to Mabry, has to bounce it out. There are three green shirts there to stop him. Good job on the interior there on the linebackers by the green and white right there. Minding Mabry and not letting him do what he do does best, and that's go north-south. Gain of just one. Brings up second and goal from the five. Riders have some options here. Inside the five. Mabry, the lone back. They'll turn around, give it to him. And he is in for a touchdown. Colton Mabry's second score of the night from five yards out. Brings the score 24 13 with 10 10 to go on the Wabash Mutual telephone scoreboard. He's one of those old school running backs that just puts his head down, gets his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, and say, tackle me if you can. They couldn't on that one. Here and now, the varsity lanes extra point awaits the Rough Riders. Looks like they'll go for two. Yeah, this game is far from over, partner. Cody Wallace will break the huddle. We'll see what St. Mary's tiles up here. Hands off to Mabry, has to bounce it out, and is just he past the pylon, got it in. The two-point conversion is up and, or two-point conversion is past the pylon and good. Ten to go. That varsity lane, extra point, makes it 24-15 on WOSN. St. Mary's. We'll see if the Rough Riders think about anything funny here with 10-10 to go, trailing by nine. So Lina looks like they're ready for any trickeration. And they do. They, they try did. the onside kick. Just a mass of humanity. Ten. Rough Riders got the football. They got a penalty flag after the play. But St. Mary's comes up with the ball. I think they're saying a legal touch. I was going to say it might be. An illegal touch as Hayden Davis gets stretched out right at the point of attack. And they're saying that he touched it at the 49-yard line, I believe. The official pointing just shy. St. Mary's doesn't look like they like the explanation from the official. And that's a tough onside kick to cover when you just got 10, 11 bodies coming at you full force and yes. you, you got to wait for the football. Illegal touching against St. Mary's is the call. Didn't wait till it went 10 yards, they say. 
And the Rough Riders thought they had the football and a little bit of momentum. Instead, Salina will have possession. Officials will spot the football, football. at the 44-yard line. And that's where Salina will have the ball with a nine-point lead. Another half a yard, partner. Yeah. You know, another half a yard. It's a game of inches. Bobby Morris comes back in at quarterback. Let's see what the visitors do defensively here, see if they can get a three and out. Caleb gave us in motion. Fake it to him, Lutz the carry. Comes back the other way, Lutz into the open field. Dives down at the 26 yard line. Gain of 18 yards for John Lutz. My goodness, Mr. Merlin just blew up the defender and allowed him to turn the corner for another 10 yards. Caden Merlin on the left guard spot. That's a very popular name in this community. Yes, sir. Been a whole host of them. Absolutely. All athletic, both in football, basketball, baseball. Ball to 26 yard line. Is Davis back in at quarterback? He's done some damage with his legs. St. Mary's walks up the rider with the linebackers and will blitz Davis into the open field. Inside the Wright State University Lake Campus red zone, inside the five. That's a 21 yard gain for Braylon Gabus, and Salon is in business once more. Dixon with a touchdown saving tackle right there. Just under nine and a half to go in tonight's ball game. Battle of Grand Lake Bulldogs looking for their first one over St. Mary since 2015. Another touchdown here would go a long way in helping those chances. Play clock down to 10 as Salina breaks the huddle. Gabus in the gun with four. Has to hurry. Miscommunication and a get a timeout by Salina. Stop at you play. We'll step aside as well. Salina deep into St. Mary's territory. Sends a man in motion. Gets the snap. Goes back the other way. Gabus still on his feet, carrying a Rough Rider defender into the end zone for his third rushing touchdown of the night. This one from 11 yards out. Dixon got him, but it was a little bit too late. That's just great second effort there by Gabus, churning them legs, reaching for the end zone, crossing that plane. It's been a big night for Braylon Gabus. And with the varsity lanes extra point, the Bulldogs can make it 31-15. Zach Graber on to kick the extra point. Bobby Morris will hold. Snap, spot, kick, good. And the Bulldogs lead by 16. We'll step aside, come back with your fourth quarter action. Salina with the lead on double. Extra points brought to you by Varsity Lanes Bowling Center at St. Mary's. Varsity Lanes. Family and friends together with bowling, fun, and great food for everyone. It's a 16 point advantage for Salina after the Varsity Lanes extra point from Zach Graver, who's got the football teed up, ready to send it away. It's another deep one caught inside the five. Perry still on his feet. Got out to just shy of the 30-yard line, so a nice return for Kevin Perry. St. Mary's trailing by 16. Have to move pretty quick here. Good effort there by Perry to try to get as many yards as he could. 
Ball spotted at the 27. First and 10 for St. Mary's. Riders are going to split backfield behind Wallace. Now we've got a timeout by Salina. I think they had too many players on the field. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, one went running off. And so rather than take the chance of having too many or not enough, you take the timeout, give your guys a chance to hydrate up, and you'll take the opportunity to just say, hey, all right, <laughs> situational awareness. They need to go a long way. Trailing by 16. Let's, let's make put, sure we let's put eight in the box <laughs> and make them throw the football. Right. Let's make sure we don't get caught watching the paint dry in the backfield on a play action pass or anything like that. St. Mary's has been there a couple of times where they've gotten stuff going, just haven't been able to sustain those drives. And it's been the opposite for Salina every time, Gilly. Something has gone wrong for the Bulldogs during a drive. They bounce back and still scored. They've had two drives, two touchdowns called back by penalties, and they've scored later on in that drive. Well, and that St. Mary's onside kick, you know, that's a that's a 14-point swing. Yeah. They don't get the football, and Salina goes down and scores. You give Salina a short field when right. they've... Right. And they've been very productive and effective yeah. in what they've done tonight. Yeah, here they are. They're just loading the box up. They'll hand off to Dominic Osborne to the Riders. A little bit of room to run. Stutter steps, still on his feet, tries to reverse field. Gets out to the 42. Gets a late foul industrial welding supplies first down for Dominic Osborne. He had just two carries. I think we, oh, we got it. Okay, we got oh. a legal block to the waist. So instead of that late foul industrial and welding supplies first down, it's going backwards. Osborne had two carries for just two carries for six yards last week. And the loss against St. Henry has been really productive tonight for the Riders. Yeah, he's been very productive as well as uh, uh, Mabry. You know, he had that big run, the 5'10", 210 pound junior. Had that 80-yard burst there in the first half. So instead of the ball being spotted at the 42, it's at the 15 after the penalty. And we'll get a stoppage in play from the official. As yeah, yeah, has got to get the yeah, cast fixed again. Yeah, the officials making sure that something something to do with the cast. And, and you can't really be too safe with that. That you, you can't have somebody with a weapon out there right. like that being Absolutely. able to. Absolutely, in fairness to e either himself or anybody else on the field. Perry the carry, and he's tripped up by the Salina D early. Again, the ball nice play there by Mr. Merlin. Gain of two, second and twenty. Flag fell out of the pocket. No. <laughs> one of the one of the and times they picked it, it up, waved it off. It's not a penalty. Second and twenty for St. Mary's. Wallace will go under center. Look to his left. Make sure the wide receiver is there. Dominic Osborne again with a little bit of a crease. Tries to. Rip through a Salina defender. Ball's on the floor. And they say Salina's got it. It's the first turnover of the game for either side. And the Bulldogs pounce on the football at the 35. Here's to be Mr. Lutz with the football. Nice run there by St. Mary's. Nice blocking on the outside. And it looked like, to me, that Caden Wurntz tried to rip it out when he made the initial contact, didn't. It must have just jarred the football loose for Osborne, put it on the turf. Salina pounced on it, and they get their first turnover of the season. They said, we've got to create turnovers. Did right there. That's a big one. Might see a steady dose of Parker Burtke and John Lutz here in the waning stages of quarter number four. Bobby Morris in the gun, gives to Berkey. Keeps, powers through, a defender and his own blocker. Picks up eight on first and ten. Dixon, Roby, Perry on the stop. So after the fumble, Salina on the verge already of the Wright State University Lake Campus red zone. Is Bobby Morris content to just watch the numbers tick off the play clock? before they break the huddle and snap the football. Leading 31-15 on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. 
He just has his hands on his hips, watching the numbers go down. Berkey up the middle. Needed to get to the 25. Berkey, the just be short. He is just shy, and it'll bring up third and about as short as you can get. Perry on the stop. Davis, on the stop. Davis. Third and less than assisting. A yard. How about the running back tonight for Salina Gilly between Parker Burtke and John Lutz? Played really well alongside Braylon Gavis. I think both sides of the ball running back wise has yeah, played true. well tonight. I think the difference has been the, the, the five offensive linemen for Salina and their tight end and the holes are opening up. Morris takes the snap, gives to Burtke, patient, just tries to dive over the 25 yard line and has the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies first down. Smart play by that young man going airborne, extended the football. Stop by Roby. Looks like we got a bulldog down. Appears to be Merlin cramping up. Got it gets stretched out there on the right leg. Exactly halfway point of the fourth quarter. Bulldogs lead 31-15. And really, after both sides struggled mightily in week one offensively, there's encouraging things for both sides. Absolutely, when you go back and break his film down, are there gonna be corrections that has to be made? Absolutely, but the difference between their play between week one and two is gonna speak volumes when the coaches go and dissect that film. Two timeouts remain for Salina, three for St. Mary's after the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies first down. Bulldogs knock it on the door of the Wright State University Lake Campus red zone. You know, and it's not gonna get any easier, partner, and I'm gonna use your cheat sheet here. Salina next week is going to be going over to the renovated stadium of Eggers Field in Van Wert, yeah. who is, you know, having a ball game tonight with Lima Bath. We'll get to St. Mary's here in a second after this play. First and 10, 24 yard line. Morris, hands on his hips, just going to watch. It's one of those things that you help your offensive lineman out and make sure they don't have to stay in that stance for 15, 20 seconds, but he's going to wait until about eight seconds on the clock. And we'll give to Lutz, or Parker, Bur Parker, Parker Burkey, I beg your pardon. Gain of four. Davis. Hot on the stop for the Rough Riders. Hot on the stop. Five. And then next week, St. Mary's will host Surprising Defiance, who beat a good Napoleon football team last week. And, you know, they've got a premier running back. There are a lot of folks in the Western Buckeye League who believe Defiance could be a player in that championship race. Absolutely. Second and six upcoming. Morris in the gun once more. Two tight ends. Oh, I think we got an encroachment. Got him to jump. Three Salina points, will take man. the free five yards. Right. And they are inside the Wright State University Lake Campus red zone. Tonight and oh, the we'd be in a world of hurt if they were the, the Salina. The folks yep. here at Salina have done a great job hosting us. Yep. Ice cold water when it was 95 degrees yep. outside. Soda, felt pizza at halftime. The real t temperature felt like 101 or whatever. It was, it was warm. As Lutz the carry is brought down inside so the 10 yard line. So a seven yard carry for John Lutz. Dixon on the stop. It'll bring up first and goal for the Bulldogs. A lot of people still hanging in there watching this game on both Yes, sir. Sides. We got a packed house here at Salina Stadium. The yard marker reached the 1968 down. Salina Bulldog team who finished 10 0. They honored them before the game. That was prior to the playoffs, but they did finish 10 0. First and goal. For Salina. Burtke stands to the left of Morris. Bad snap. Morris will just run straight ahead. Brought down. I think maybe Tommy still Moore. gained a yard or so. Odd on the stop for St. Mary's. Water 
water drank tonight and Gatorade. Get those fluids back in the body, bring them in tomorrow. Probably take it a little easy tomorrow for what you stretch, took, out, took out tonight. Yep, stretch them out. Allstead are in motion. Burke the handoff. Has to turn the corner. Cut back up towards the middle of the field. Upended by Steinberg. Steinberg on the stop. Steinberg. Hot. Gain of about two. Good job by Steinberg turning him back inside, not letting him bounce out to the corner. See if Salina turns to Braylon Davis here. He's got three rushing touchdowns all the night. Threw one as well to Nick Newell. Looks like Morris will remain the quarterback. Third and goal from the eight. Upcoming for the Bulldogs with a 16-point lead and under six minutes to go on the Wabash Mutual telephone scoreboard. Morris, hands off. And Berkey met in the backfield. And St. Mary's Second wants to call a timeout. Looks like Dan Meyer and Dotson. Davis. So with two and a half to go, St. Mary's takes the timeout, hoping to get a stop here. I imagine Salina's going to kick the field goal, would be my guess. Be interesting to see. Probably looking to go up 19. Don't want to let St. Mary's hang around at 16 down where they can get a touchdown two-point conversion and make it an eight-point game. And you've seen their onside kick, and if they touch it a half yard later, we might have a whole different ball game. What if they block it and turn it for a touchdown? Yeah, no. You're so St. Mary's. Or you play it the safe way. If you don't get it, you turn it over on downs. And make St. Mary's go 93 yards to yeah. put, punch one in. Yeah. So St. Mary's has talked about what they want to do. Salina is still in the huddle. Now the green and white will come to the football. Fourth and goal from the 12-yard line. Bobby Morris back in at quarterback. Bulldogs stack wide receivers. Braylon Davis, who... Feels imperative to know where he is at all times. To the right and off the line of scrimmage of Morris in the gun. They'll send Gabus in motion. Morris rolls, fires. Oh, he's got a he's wide done. open Xander Jones for a walk-in touchdown. What a fantastic design from the Salina offense. Jack Hemmelgaard, the former Coldwater standout at quarterback, dials up a big one there on fourth and seven. That's a spectacular play by the Dogs. Two twenty-seven to go. Thirty-seven at fifteen. Bulldogs the advantage. And now looks like Salina going to go for two on the varsity lanes extra point. Just a phenomenal play design and execution by Salina. You send Gabus in motion as the, the decoy. Everybody in the stadium wants to know where that guy is on the field. You send him in motion to the left, thinking you're going to try to hit him in the flats, get him some opportunity to be in the open field and punch it in. Instead, they have him have the three receivers run all the way across the field, and Xander Jones goes back the other way, wide open. Just a beautiful design. Textbook. You should be hanging next to the Mona Lisa because that was just art on the football field by Salina to grow this lead to 37-15. Now, with some miscommunication, the Bulldogs decide they're going to take the timeout. So now just one timeout remaining for Salina, 2.27 to go. But want to make sure they've got a good play design here on the two-point conversion. Brought to you by Varsity Lanes. Varsity Lanes Bowling Center in St. Mary's brings families and friends together with bowling, fun, Great food for everyone. So the Bulldogs line up for two. Tied in and wing to the left. John Lutz to the right of Bobby Morris in the gun. The snap. Lutz the carry. Off left tackle. Met before he got to the line. Did he get the ball over? He did not. So the score remains 37 to 15. 
step aside. 2.27 to go on the fourth. We'll go back with the return on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Walker's Telephone. Mutual Telephone Scoreboard. Rough Riders looking to get the football back. Looking to work with some urgency here. Now trailing by 22. As number 22, Zach Graber, has the football teed up. Sent away, a little low line drive, a little bounce just before the 10 yard line and scooped up by St. Mary's. Looking for a little bit of room to run is Kevin Perry. Out out to the 25 yard line. We'll see what the Rough Riders put together here. Kevin Roby on the return. Ball spotted at the 25. Burns and Berkey on the stop. The ball right at the 25, 219 to go. St. Mary's back on offense. Cody Wallace with a split backfield behind him. They'll turn around and hand it off to Dominic Osborne. Meanders through. That's the line of D. Picks up the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies first down. Dominic Osborne. Osborne. The ball carried the ball nicely tonight Bulldog for the Bulldogs. The or for the Rough Riders, I beg your pardon. There's a Bulldog down on the field. Yeah, I think it's Merlin, partner. Cramping up again. Yeah, getting stretched out. And we, I didn't see any um, cramping or anything in week one just because, you know, we didn't have the heat that we have here. And I, I joked last week that, you know, it's not like it's not like baseball season where you show up to school and the coach says, hey, we got a game night, call your parents. Like, you, you know, you've known since Friday you need to need yeah. to need to hydrate up a bit, get some Gatorade in you. Uh, but it's just as warm and humid as it's been. I don't I don't blame anybody. I don't think you could. I don't know if there's enough fluids it's you can just, get in yet. It's, to, sticky. it's just you could have done everything right, and it'd still just be up. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Feels like cramps you coming on. Down there and stand and just see the sweat no, beat no. up on your skin. Yep. And give credit to the fans who have oh, stayed yeah. here tonight that put up with the the heat and the humidity and the sun blaring in their faces till about seven o'clock, and then we got just a beautiful night for football. And then in four months we'll be complaining because we can't wear I, shorts uh, yep, and t-shirts. <laughs> Wallace, the play action pass, looking for Steinberg, but pressure. Able to keep the play alive, lets it fly, but he threw it right to John Watts. And it's been that kind of night for Mr. Lutz. He's been all over the field, number 11. Lucky number 11, he's made plays on both sides of the ball. And so Salina 